Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Amy and I create coloured pencil tutorial videos. This week's tutorial I will be running through the steps and techniques I use to create this beautiful blue cat eye study, so let's get into it. To start the eye study, I outlined all the darkest areas within the eyes. This is mainly the very outer edge and the pupil, and I used a dark sepia polychromos for this and a very light hand to begin with, so that I could gently map in the overall shapes before going in with a harder pressure and really committing the pencil to the paper. Once I'm happy with the shape of the eyes and the pupil, I then block in the colour using a light shading of that same dark sepia pencil. FYI, I have a brand new tutorial that explains the pressures and techniques in which I shade, which I'll link below and as a card up above for you guys if you want to check that out in further detail. Once that initial layer is in, I then go over once more, this time pressing a little more firmly through the pencil. I use a harder pressure here because I know I'm not going to need to add too many details and I can afford to go in and burnish a little bit with that dark sepia. With those dark features in place, I then start to add the colour to the iris by first building a layer of warm grey one from the polychromos. Again, I use that really light hand and I really gently build that colour. And I use a combination of shading back and forth and small circular motions to really make sure that I fill the tooth of the paper as much as possible. And it's from here that I start to build up those blue tones and I work from lightest to darkest blue as I always do with coloured pencil. And I used four blue tones for this size. I used sky blue, Prussian blue or Prussian blue, however you want to say it, helio turquoise and dark indigo and those are all from the polychromos range as well. And I start with that sky blue and I use exactly the same technique as I did for that grey gray layer. I use that light pressure and working both in shading back and forth and in those really tiny small circular motions. And I use those circular motions to one, fill the tooth of the paper and layer evenly and two, to build the texture within the iris. I want to convey an extremely smooth shiny surface and using the circular motions helps to do that. When adding the blue tones, I make sure not to add them to the areas of the highlight within the eye. And I really take great care to map around those highlights and I make sure that I get them 100% correct. I then continue to build those blue tones, concentrating first on the darkest blue areas and slowly layering and building those darker values. And those darker areas are mainly around the outer edges, especially just underneath that top eyelid above the pupil there. Every now and then I will use a Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil to gently burnish and blend the colours together. Again, for this layer I use a really light hand. The trick is not to push too hard with the white too soon, otherwise you won't be able to build that many layers. You don't want to burnish with it, you just want to treat it like an ordinary pencil and use it really, really lightly. And while building those blue tones, I start to create really tiny small lines radiating around the pupil to convey that spherical shape of the eyes. This also adds that little bit of texture that you often see and it leads to a more realistic look as well. Once a lot more of those tones are added, I then burnish and I start to add in those highlight details. So in that highlight, I add in grey tones, light blue tones, and I blend the highlight out into the iris where necessary. And to blend that out, I just use that white pencil and apply just the tiniest amount of pressure to that. I also add a few unusual colours into the iris to really help enhance it. I added a small amount of polychromos mauve to the inner section surrounding the pupil and I used this by shading and then I also added some of those little radio, radial lines as well. And this helps to really enhance that blue tone, gives it a really nice depth of colour. And I also added small hints of raw umber here and there. And by adding that it created this really unique green tone which again just helps to enhance the colour of the eyes. When you look at any kind of set of eyes you don't just see one sort Solid color so with blue eyes it's not just blue blue eyes and any other eyes are made up of multiple different colors so I added that mauve and that raw umber in there just to really make them pop I also go through and really darken the shadows and add a few details like those little eye wormy squiggly bits along the bottom there and I use a dark sepia pencil and this color is great for shadowing on eyes and I just add a really light layer here and there to really get that spherical shape of the eyes. 
I add the dark sepia to the outer edges and blend it through the dark areas I initially laid out and also make sure that I really softly blend it through to the centre where it's often a little bit lighter as well. So that's the eye colouring and the contouring complete. I then move on to all of that fur and before I start the fur I go over with an embossing tool and I add in those really short white hairs that I know are going to be difficult to add once the fur is complete. And that's mainly one or two whiskers through the eyebrows and around the tear ducts of the eyes, so like the underneath areas of the eyes. And if you want to know more about my technique for using an embossing tool, I have a whole separate tutorial which I will link for you guys. Details of where you can find embossing tools as well are listed in the description because I know you guys are always asking me about those. I decided on this piece that I would add the fur all over. I usually work patch by patch, so my approach for this one is slightly different to my usual. And I started by mapping in all of the darkest areas of the fur, and I started with that warm grey one pencil. I pretty much just added in all of the stripes to the forehead, either side of the eyes and to the dark areas around the tear ducts. And when doing this I made sure that I worked in the direction of the fur and I really paid attention to the reference photo to make sure that I was getting that correct, especially around those tear duct areas. I then went straight over with dark sepia pencil using a really light hand and added in those dark tones, again making sure that I work in the direction of the fur. I used a mixture of shading and fur strokes depending on how thick and dense those darker patches were. So around the eyebrows it tended to be a little bit thicker so I used a little bit more of a shading technique to get that initial colour down. And through the middle of the forehead where it was a little bit more flecked with white then I just used a few fur strokes here and there just to add in that darker tone. I then went over the entire area bar the very middle white area through the nose with the warm grey one and I used a really light hand working in that fur direction. For base layers like this I always use a shading motion back and forth as it fills the tooth of the paper and gives a much better base than if I were to go in and start adding individual hair straight away. It's also so much quicker. So this study had three colours of fur, it had white through the centre, black speckled on the forehead and to the sides of the eyes it had this really really lovely Wheaton tone. So for that Wheaton tone I went over the base layer with some brown ochre 10% from the Caran d'Ache Luminance and I really lightly layered using some shading and I mainly concentrated on adding the darker Wheaton tones first. And I went over, once I've added that, with some Beaster, starting off with light shading before developing and building in some of those fur strokes to really start to convey that fluffy furry texture. I also built in some burnt sienna and some walnut brown in the really darkest areas and I even added a little bit of dark sepia here and there. Around the eyes I feathered out with some burnt sienna and walnut brown making super duper tiny marks with those pencils and adding in a tiny amount of shading. That's just so the eyes looked as if they were blending into the fur and just weren't stuck on. So it's really important that when you are doing eyes that you do make sure that you blend your colours around the eyes into your fur. There's one colour which I added to this Wheaton tone which really brought it to life and that's the cinnamon from the Polychromos and ooh it pairs so nicely with that brown ochre 10% and creates such a lovely tone. If you haven't tried it then do, it's seriously good. So I just continue to build in those Wheaton tones by building those colours, layering gently and creating that fluffy fur with a mixture of shading and fur strokes. Those really orangey yellow tones that you can see appearing are made by adding in a little tiny hint of raw umber as well as those other colours I mentioned. As for the lighter patches underneath the eyes, they were added in using a harder pressure on the warm grey one pencil and building in a little bit of the warm grey three. The technique for this area was less shading and more fur strokes and the trick here is to build the darkest fur strokes to create shadow rather than build fur strokes all over so you just want to give that illusion of the fur by building in the shadows. I also add in a few light layers of mauve and sky blue to increase the tonality of white. When you look at white fur do you really see just white? No. No. 
you see all the colours and I like to replicate that with my pencil by adding in as many colours as possible but mainly just purple and blue and a little bit of pink. The left hand side complete, I move to the forehead and this is where there's a lot of that sort of salt and pepper type fur and lots of little white dashes and flecks poking through. So for this section I basically just added a whole nother layer of the warm grey one and then I went straight in with the dark sepia and I started to create fur lines. The trick here is to keep your fur lines quite far apart and sporadic and usually I create fur lines quite close together to form thick luxurious fur but this patch looked a little rougher and keeping those fur lines further apart will help to create that illusion of texture. Throughout this section I tried to keep my pencil as sharp as possible to create those really precise fine lines. Where there were thicker clumps of dark fur, I just grouped the fur lines a little bit closer together and that just helps to create a darker look without having to add too many layers. I also built in some walnut brown tones and added a glaze of brown ochre 10% here and there as well. You can see the effect of such a simple technique as grouping your fur lines further apart. I managed to create an effortless white dash look on the cat's forehead. It's just a really, really simple technique, guys. You just keep your fur lines further apart. With that complete, I then used exactly the same method of the Wheaton fur on the right hand side, working in those darker patches first and then building that depth and texture throughout. I think the key to this piece lies in the shadows underneath and around the eyes and this is where I paid the most attention and this is also where that sort of blending out the darker areas of your eyes into your fur comes into effect as well. The last part of this study was the white centre section and this is actually the easiest and the funnest part of the whole thing for me, mainly because I find white fur extremely easy to render and I get to use all of those lovely colours. I started with that base of the warm grey one, mapping in all the different directions of the fur. Around a cat's nose is a really tricky place and it's essential that you take your time and really plot out those different fur directions. So really take your time, don't worry if you think it's taking too long, just plot out the directions, make sure you get it right. Once that's done I then start to build in the texture and I use the same method as underneath the eyes. I go straight in using fur lines and only depicting the darkest ones which I can see. So I use a warm grey 3 pencil and a light hand on the dark sepia to add in this texture. And I make sure that I use really small marks with the pencil as the fur on the centre of the face is often much shorter than the surrounding areas. With the fur texture building I also add in a few glazes of other colours like the mauve, the sky blue, dark indigo, cinnamon, all of those beautiful colours which you might not necessarily think to add. I also add in a few fur strokes with the blue pencil just to help convey an element of shine. And that is pretty much it. The techniques used throughout this are all really really simple ones, just shading and creating small fur lines with your pencil. Again, for more details on shading, check out that tutorial as it's got some super helpful tips on pencil positioning and pressures. If you want to follow along with this tutorial in real time then the full three and a half hour tutorial is available for my patron and website subscribers. The link to both is listed in the description if you want to check either out. There's also that shading technique video on there in real time as well. All materials that I've used throughout this are listed in the description below as well as affiliate links of where you can buy my materials. I really hope that you guys found this tutorial helpful and if you have make sure you give it a big thumbs up as it really does help out the channel maybe even a little sneaky share as well if you're new around here why not hit that subscribe button and join the world of everything colored pencil i post new videos every single friday and i live stream on sundays as well it's a really good place to chill and hang out anyway guys thanks for watching and i will see you guys next week bye